Hello everyone. So, we will discuss today the basic operation of a synchronous counter and synchronous counter will determine find out its advantages and applications. Till now we have discussed sequential circuits and the difference between sequential and combinational registers under sequential circuit we discussed registers types of registers and its applications. Today we are discussing one more sequential circuit that is nothing but counters. So, counters comes under sequential since we use a memory element here. So, let us discuss today about the sequential circuit one of the sequential circuit that is counters. So, we will discuss counters types of counters its operation its applications and the differences. So, what exactly is a counter? Counter is nothing but it is a sequential circuit as I discussed. In register we use an array of flip flops to move the data bits right and suppose I want to move multiple bits I re require multiple flip flops. So, array of flip flops forms a register. So, which will move the data either right or left parallelly I can load, serially I can load, I can take the output either serial or parallel. But in case of counter, it is also an array of flip flop I will be using, but in a different manner. So, here I am going to get the output as a count value for every clock cycle, where I will be applying clock for each of this flip flops in the counter. So, at every clock transition, you will be getting a count value, the count value increases. So, after the largest value, the output will wrap around or go back or reset to 0 value. Take a simple example, if you take 2 bits, we will have 4 combinations as you know. So, the present state will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So, if I consider the next state of what is the first value that is initial state of 0, 0, what should be the next state from 0, 0 it will move to 0, 1, from 0, 1 to 1, 0 then 1 0 to 1 1. So, this is a typical truth table where it specifies the present state and the next state and this same truth table can be written in case of state diagram. So, in case of state diagram in means of state diagram I am writing representing this truth table. In state diagram each state is represented by a circle inside the circle you will be writing the state present state and the arrow represents transition from present state to next state. So, this will be your next state, then third state, fourth state back to your initial state. This cycle repeats. So, that is why it is called as a counter. Counter gets each clock cycle, your count value gets incremented. So, that is what is a counter. So, what are the benefits of these counters? So, it is it keeps ba basically it keeps track of time. So, what time? What is the count? So, the next clock pulse, what is the count? Some applications you need to record how many times this event has occurred. So, how many bits are sent or received? So, uh, what are the how many steps have been performed in some computations? In such case, cases, I will be using this counter. So, counter has got major application in digital field as well in communication field. So, types of counter. So, counters are classified broadly classified as synchronous and asynchronous. As asynchronous counter in which uh, the pattern of connecting your flip flops is different compared to synchronous. In asynchronous counter all the flip flops we connect. So, we connect a clock to first flip flop and output of first flip flop is connected as a clock input of second flip flop. So, third flip flop once again the output of second flip flop is connected as a clock input to the third. So, similarly it is followed first clock first only the clock is applied to first flip flop the rest all are triggered by the output of previous flip flop. So, this is how we do connection in a synchronous counter. In synchronous counter all the flip flops are clocked together 
simultaneously. So, all the clock inputs are driven by a single clock. So, all the flip flops will respond with respect to the clock simultaneously in case of synchronous counter. Let us take an example of asynchronous 3 bit up counter. So, what do you mean by 3 bit? Why it is called as asynchronous? Asynchronous means clock is connected to only one flip flop, it is not connected to all simultaneously, it is not synchronized, that is why asynchronized. Only first flip flop will be connected with clock. So, 3 bit represents I am counting the values of 3 bit value. So, if I want 3 bit counter, I do require 3 flip flops. For each bits, 1 flip flop. Suppose I need 4 bit counter, so I require 4 flip flops and this counter design. It is also called as ripple counter. Why? We will discuss. In an asynchronous counter, you can just see the clock is applied on the first stage here. So, 3 bit you have 3 flip flops, the flip flops used here is j k. We have discussed in the previous sessions flip flops under that j k. Uh, j k truth table we have discussed 4 conditions. The first condition was no change condition, then set condition, reset condition, the final condition was a toggle condition. When both the j and k inputs are 1, we get output toggling. So, toggling is nothing but changing state. So, previous change, previous state will be changed to next state. So, if the previous value holding in flip flop is 0, the next transition will become 1. So, similarly, if it is 1, it will be 0. So, toggling is nothing but changing state. So, that was we observed in JK flip flop. The same condition is applied in the design of counter. So, toggling condition is the major condition where we employ this in the design of counter because we need to count the number of clock pulses here, number of events. To count I require change of state for each clock pulse. So, for that for that reason we are using j k which connected together and it is j and k are tied to i input, i is nothing but logic 1. I can as well use T flip flop, T is nothing but toggle flip flop. So, in this circuit the first flip flop J k is connected to I, similarly two other the next two flip flops next stages also J and k are tied to logic 1. So, in this first flip flop a clock is applied and you can just see if the negative transition is connected, then I can connect either positive or negative. If a negative is connected, it acts as a down counter. If a positive is connected, it acts as a up counter. So, can take the flip flop, 3 bit flip ripple counter can be used to count maximum 7. So, 0 to 7 you can get the count pulses transition, then back to 0 once again. So, they can be constructed as I said clock j k flip flop. The system clock is used to drive the first flip flop, the output of the first flip flop drives the second flip flop, similarly the second is drives the third flip flop. So, flip flop toggles at each transition, so flip flop first flip flop will toggle for first transition, the second flip flop will toggle as A goes low. So, let us examine this through the timing diagram. You can just see here as the first clock transition, the leading edge of the clock signal, the output of the first flip flop is 0. The next well, the moment you apply a clock, 0 is toggle to 1. So, if you see the first flip flop output, you will get a toggling condition at each clock pulse. So, the second output, second flip flop, you can just see here it toggles after 2 clock pulses. Why? Because the clock uh, is applied for the second flip flop only when the output of the first flip flop toggles, triggers. So, output of the first flip flop is connected to the input clock to the second. That is the reason this has to wait to trigger. So, one clock transition the first flip flop is toggling 
2 o'clock transition, the second flip flop is struggling, 4 o'clock pulse transition, the third flip flop is toggling. Since the third flip flop has to wait for the second, second has to wait for the first. That is the reason asynchronous counter is called as ripple counter, which ripples for the previous uh, flip flop output. It has to wait for the output of the previous stage. So, you can see the toggling gear for each clock pulse uh, out from the output of the flip flop. The second flip flop, you can just see first clock pulse, it is low, the second clock pulse and third clock pulse, it is high. This changes its state when the first flip flop has changed its state and the third flip flop uh, is holding for 4 clock pulses 0. It is toggling only after the second flip flop has been changed from 1 to 0 transition. So, it will change from 0 to 1. Similarly, here 1 to 0 transition after it changes, this has changed its state from 0 to 1. This is how we get the counting of pulses. So, we have 8 clock pulses. So, under that each clock pulse, the first output is toggling, second output changes its state. So, if you can count for the output together, if I take Q naught, Q 1, Q 2 of all the three flip flops simultaneously, I will get the count as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, where Q naught represents LSB and Q 2 represent MSB. So, you have 0, 1, 2, 3, then 4 and this count is 5, 6, 7, at the 8 clock pulse, it repeats the same counting cycle repeats. So, 0, 1 to 7, your count is completed from 0 to 7. So, this is 3 bit asynchronous counter timing diagram. So, when I get the output in counting fashion, suppose in some cases I want to stop the particular, I want that particular count or I should stop to the particular value, I can use some logic we call as a decoding logic. So, at the output of the flip flop, we are going to connect an AND gate, a decoding gate, so that the output of the gate will be held high or low based on what value you want to store or you want to display. So, for example, if you take this 3 bit flip flop, so output of this flip flops are connected to AND gate. Suppose I want to hold this or preset this to 7, then the decoding state A, B, C is equal to 1, 1, 1. So, when this all the 3 becomes 1, 1, 1, output of the AND gate will be high. So, you will get a count 7. Similarly, if I want to count for 5, I will connect A, B, C, 1, 0, 1. Whenever the count appears 1, 0, 1, I use that count as an output input to AND gate and finally, I will get the output of the AND gate as the required count. You can see this clock diagram uh, waveform wave here. So, regular clock pulse is applied and A and B, C are the outputs of the flip flop. So, the regular fashion, the this counter will be counting. So, at A, B, C, when all the A, B, C are 1, the output of the gate will be I. So, you will get the decoding output as 7. Similarly, if I take 1, 0, 1, you will get the decoding output as 5. So, any in a desired value, I can take this particular value at the output side using decoding logic. I can also design up down counter using the same JK flip flop. In up down counter, we have the option uh, certain control logic is deployed here in order to count both in up or down fashion. So, what is up count? When I count from 0 to 7, it is up counting. Down count is 7 to 0 in decreasing manner that is called as down counting. So, both operations up counting as well as down counting can be done in the same logic circuit by 
adding some controllery circuit in between two flip flops. So, you can see that uh, di circuit diagram over here JK flip flop as usual we have used for the design of this counter and NAND gate logic three NAND gates are used intermediate between these two flip flops. Similarly, between these two flip flops three NAND gates have been used. So, input of the flip flop JK are tied to logic one since we are going in toggling mode and we apply clock over here for first flip flop since it is asynchronous counter and output of both uh, complemented and normal output of this flip flop both are connected to NAND gate input. So, output of normal output is connected to the upper NAND gate complemented output is connected to the lower NAND gate and we are using an additional control signal here called up and down. These two are control signals in order to differentiate between up counter and down counting. So, whenever I need up counting then I apply this signal as logic 1 and the other signal will be made 0. Similarly, the reverse case when I want down counting. So, the lower control signal will be made high and the upper will be made low. So, output of this control logic is connected as a clock input of the next flip flop. The similarly, next stage this same control circuitry is connected to the input of the next flip flop, clock input of next flip flop. Since it is asynchronous counter, I need to do this connection. So, whenever let us uh, examine this when up is equal to 1 what is going to happen and down is equal to 0. When my control input up is set to logic 1 and down input is set to logic 0, the NAND gate network flip flop 0 and flip flop 1 will get will get the non inverted output the clock input of flip flop 1. So, to the flip flop clock input of 1 you will get the output here. So, thus the counter count begins this way that is up normal up counting. So, when I make down counter 0 down control signal as 0 up count as 1 the lower NAND gate is taken uh, input as 1 and whatever the value coming from Q Q bar Q complemented will get an output here. So, this is how the lower NAND gate is taken to the input of next flip flop. So, you will get down counting note that for up counting we take the output of the normal output of the flip flop and it is connected to the clock input of the second flip flop similarly in the next stages. For the down counting we take the complemented output and it is connected to the clock input of the second similarly the second complemented is connected to the clock input of the third. So, up counting and down counting can be done simultaneously uh, by using up and down control signal. So, by using this control circuitry either one of the NAND gate is enabled and you will get correspondingly up counting as well next down counting. So, what are the drawbacks in asynchronous counter? So, there is a limit to its highest operating frequency each flip flop has got a delay since second as to second stage has to wait for the first stage output third stage has to wait for the second as well the first. So, third stage the final output as to final flip flop output as to wait has been will be delayed by the previous stages. So, that is the reason it is slow compared to the synchronous counter. So, total settling time of for this counter is approximately the delayed time towards the total number of flip flops we use each flip flop will incur a delay. So, when it comes to the final stage it has to wait for the total number of flip flops incurring the delay. So, this flip flop has a delay time there is a possibility of glitches. So, glitches is nothing but unwanted signal that is going to appear in the output due to some decoding gates used in the counter. Synchronous counter 3 bit counter has been developed or designed by looking into the limitations of 
asynchronous counter. In synchronous counter, all the flip flops are clocked together with a common clock pulse. So, similarly, we use here JK flip flop for toggling and we use here the difference between uh, the synchronous design and asynchronous design. We do not connect the output of first stage to the input clock of second stage. Instead, we are using some decoding logic, we are using AND gates to get the count. So, as usual the normal counting from 0 to 7, you can observe in the truth table 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. In this JK input of first flip flops are connected to I, flip flop 1 has JK inputs connected and the output is connected to the J and K tied together to the second flip flop and the sec it, it is also connected to the AND gate. Output of the first flip, uh, f second flip flop is connected to the input of the AND gate. This AND gate output is connected to the input of third flip flop. So, both outputs of FF0 and FF1 are I when we apply the positive pulses. So, let us examine how this works. The JK inputs are connected here FF1 as its inputs J and K connected to the output, then the JK inputs of FF2 are connected to the output of AND gate and it is fed to the flip flop. First flip flop output toggles at each clock pulses. Note that all the clock are tied simultaneously and this will be triggering, uh, will be toggling for each clock pulse. When it comes to the second flip flop, will be remaining initially 0, will change its states in the next transition of the flip flop from 0 to 1, it has changed here. After 4 clock pulses, your third flip flop will respond. After 2 clock pulses, second flip flop will respond. After 1 clock pulse, the first flip flop will change its state. So, this is how we apply clock simultaneously, you will get output without delayed counting, you will get in synchronous counter. Synchronous 4 bit counter, we use 4 flip flops. In 3 bit counter, we use 3 flip flops. Similarly, uh, the circuit has been designed the inputs are tied and connected to the AND gate. Output of the AND gate is connected to the input stage of the second gate. Similarly, third is connected to the output of uh, third flip flop is connected to the input of the second AND gate and output is connected to the input of fourth flip flop and all the clocks are fed simultaneously. Outputs are driven or taken from this output of each flip flop Q A, Q B, Q C and Q D. We have 4 flip flops, we apply logic 1 to J and K and clock pulse is applied here AND gate responds with respect to this and this AND gate respond with respect to the output of third flip flop and the output of second flip flop and this depends on these two flip flops and this output depends on the previous two flip flops. This is how the counting takes place. There is a major advantage over here is we do not have delay here compared to asynchronous counter since all the flip flops are responding simultaneously with respect to clock need not to wait for the delay. The delay is less here compared to asynchronous counter. You can just see the waveform of 4 bit asynchronous waveform uh, diagram. So, clock pulses Q A responds to each each clock pulse, Q B responds after 1 clock pulse triggering, Q C responds after 4 clock pulses, Q D after 8 clock pulses, 1, 2, 4 and 8. So, the output is going to change its states from 0 to 1. So, similarly here from 1 to 0, 0 to 1. If you take up account this is 0, 0. If I take the output simultaneously, Q A, Q B, Q C, Q D of all the flip flops, you will get a count as 0, 0. So, if I take up at the second leading edge of this clock, I will get 0, 0, 1. 
Similarly, this is 0, 1, 0, 0. We will get the combinations of 0 to 15 count in case of 4 bit synchronous counter. Similarly, if it is for 3 bit, it is 0 to 7. So, for 4 bit, it is 0 to 15 and the cycle repeats. This is this circuit diagram gives you the same 4 bit up down counter as we have discussed in the previous session that was asynchronous and this is synchronous. Here we are using a control logic of 2 AND gates and 1 OR gate. So, we have a count up and count down additional circuit at the input side. So, whenever I need to do the up counting then count up control logic is tied to logic 1 and count down is tied to logic 0. The corresponding AND gate is enabled and the output of the AND gate is sent through the OR gate and it is given as a clock pulse here to the next flip flop. So, finally, I will get a count up waveform. So, when I make count input, count up input I, the upper AND gates of this control logic will be held I. For count down, the lower logic gate and gate will be Li. So, you will get the counting in down counting fashion. Your output will be from 15 to 0. So, true table of count up mode, count down mode, we have 0 for 3 bit 1 to 7 and for down count it is 7 to 0. So, let us analyze this circuit diagram, how exactly this operates. So, this circuit is connected to AND gate and is connected to OR gate of the next flip flop. Clock is controlled using OR gate and which has got up and down counting logic. So, in this other input of AND gate is connected to So, this is upper gate, this is lower gate, this is connected to the control signal up and control signal down and we will get the output here x 1 and this I will treat this as y 1 and this is connected to the input clock of the next stage. So, similarly here AND gate. is connected once again, the output is connected here. This is x 2 and this is y 2. So, we have an intermediate output from the AND gate here, upper gate and the lower gate, which is connected to j k flip flop, the second stage clock of the second flip flop. So, you can see Whenever I apply the count down line as low and the count up line as I, let us examine what is up line as low and down line as low. So, what is going to happen? If down line is low, if the count down, count down line is low, the lower AND gates y 1, y 2 are disabled. Similarly, in the third stage y 2, y 3 are disabled. So, when these gates are disabled, the out flip flops, the clock applied at the count port output will go directly then, then clock applied at this will go directly 
to the upper AND gates that is x 1, x 2, x 3. The outputs are steered through this stages. The clocks are applied, the up control signals will be sent simultaneously and the upper gates are enabled. Similarly, if the count up line goes low, the upper AND gates x 1, x 2, x 3 are disabled. Here it is enabled. So, the clock applied at the input side applied at the input side countdown will go directly into flip flop A and the output is taken this output is steered at the lower NAND gate output and it is connected to the clock of the second stage. So, similarly, you are you will get you will the uh, circuit will be in the down counting fashion. So, in this is up counting, down counting based on up line and down line making high or low the corresponding AND gates are enabled. So, particularly if the upper gate is enabled then the clocks are applied to the flip flops and outputs are steered and it is sent to the next coming stages. You can observe the waveform here for count up waveform count up. So, x 2 output and output of this flip flop is connected to R which acts as an input to the second stage. So, your output is changing the output of first flip flop toggles for each clock pulse, output of second flip flop toggles after two pulses, then output of third flip flop toggles after four clock pulses. Similarly, eight clock pulses for the last stage. This is for this waveform is for count up waveform. For countdown waveform, so output of the first flip flop will be 111 since my counting starts from the other way round. So, it is 111 here. So, the next clock pulse it is changing. So, it is uh, toggling for each clock pulse in the first stage, toggling for 2 clock pulse in the second stage, 4 clock pulse in the third stage, similarly for the fourth stage. This is how your counting operation takes place in case of up and down. Let us discuss what is the difference between asynchronous and asynchronous counter. In asynchronous counter, the clock is as we discussed in the previous section, clock input is applied to LSB of the flip flop and the output of the first flip flop is connected as clock input to the next flip flop. But in case of synchronous, we apply clock for all flip flops, common clock is applied and all the flip flops are toggle flip flop what we use in asynchronous. Any flip flop can be used in synchronous counter design. Speed depends on number of flip flops we use in asynchronous. Here speed is independent of whatever the number of flip flops you are using in synchronous counter. It does not matter, speed does not matter here, but in case of asynchronous the number as you increase the number of flip flops there will be more delay. Since each flip flop has to depend are asked to wait for the previous flip flop output. There will be a delay between each flip flop. So, total delay will be more if you add more number of flip flop. No extra logic gates are required in case of asynchronous, but you require an extra logic gates in case of synchronous design. Cost is less and cost is more because additional circuitry, complex circuitry, number of gates we are using for each stage will be more in case of synchronous design. It is also known as ripple counter, this are known as parallel counters in case of synchronous counter. So, most many applications, some applications where we speed is not concerned then asynchronous counter is used. Whenever we are more of we are not worried about the con, uh, control circuitry or uh, the hardware part then we use synchronous design. 
we will summarize what exactly is synchronous counter. It is, it can be made from toggle flip flop or T type flip flop or also JK flip flop are easier to design than asynchronous counter. They are called syn uh, synchronous because the clock input of the flip flops are all clocked together at the same time with the same clock signal. That is why the name synchronous has come. Due to this common clock pulse, all the output switch or change simultaneously. No need to wait for the previous flip flop. Synchronous counter count are sometimes called as parallel counters since I apply clock for all flip flops parallelly. This memory keeps track of the present state. Count sequence is controlled by the decoding logic gates. Overall faster operation to achieve compare to asynchronous counter, so it is faster. So, let us go through once again the circuit operation, the logic operation of asynchronous as well as synchronous counter. So, whenever I need to design any counter, I will consider present state and next state. So, I am going to write in present ta state table all the combinations in the next state what should be my next count that has to be written in the next state table. Based on present state table and next state table, I will write a state diagram. State diagram depicts, so what should be my the desired state. State is nothing but the value, the count that is expected. Next transition, 0, 0 represents first state that gives the count value 0, 0, 1 gives the count value 1. 1 0 gives the count value 2. Similarly, 1 1 gives count value 3. So, every transition, each transition the states changes. So, we call this as state diagram. Types of counters as we discuss asynchronous and synchronous based on their applications and design we are using it. So, each flip flop is triggered and it is independent the clock is given to first flip flop and output of first flip flop is connected as a clock input of the second stage. Similarly, for the preceding coming stages we do the same, but in case of synchronous counter clock has to be applied simultaneously for all the flip flops. So, that is why it is faster compared to a synchronous counter. So, need not each flip flop need not wait for the output of the previous flip flop. In the design, either I can use, I can design up counting or down counting based on the output where I do the connection. If I connect the normal output to the clock input, it becomes an up counter. So, for the down counting operation, I need to connect the no complemented output to the clock input of the second stage. All the inputs of the flip flops are tied to logic 1 since it has to be operated in toggle mode. So, counter application we use JK flip flop in toggle condition. So, we have discussed 3 bit counter, 3 bit asynchronous counter, asynchronous counter is also called as ripple counter since it has to each flip flop has to depend on the previous flip flop output. We are counting the pulses here, each flip flop will count the clock pulses with respect to the clock edge, either it can be a positive edge triggering or it can be a negative edge triggering and the next stage flip flop has to wait for the previous flip flop output for changing its state. So, when I take the output parallelly, I will be getting a particular count. Suppose I need to get, I want one particular value as an output, then I can use an AND gate decoding gate to get the output from each flip flop. Suppose I want the count as 7, A, B, C, the output of each flip flop are connected to AND gate and I can get that when all the inputs of the AND gates are 1, the output will be 7, 1, 1 represents 7, 
I can decode the particular count when required. In case of up down counter, the same counter can be operated in both the fashions either up counting or down counting. This is done through the additional circuitry called control circuitry. Through this control circuitry, I can select either up counting or down counting. So, drawbacks in asynchronous counter limitation is the highest operating frequency and the delay since each flip flop has to wait for the preceding flip flop. Final flip flop has to wait for the total number of flip flops delay incurred by each flip flop. There is a possibility of getting glitches unwanted signal occurring at the output side in case of asynchronous counter. In synchronous counter the connections over here is different from asynchronous wherein the clocks are applied simultaneously to all the flip flops here and as usual J and K of the first stage is tied to logic 1, J and K of the second stage is connected using an AND gate logic. Similarly, 4 bit flip flop <coughs> has got 4 bit synchronous counter has got 4 flip flops and each flip flop is again tied with AND gates. The output input of the each flip flop depends on the output of the AND gate and this AND gate is dependent on the previous output. Similarly, we get 4, 4, 4 bit counter count from 0 to 15. In synchronous, we have both up and down counting. Similarly, as we discussed in asynchronous, we use a control circuit here through AND and OR gate. So, based on the control signal either up or down, based on logic 1 and 0, the upper AND gate or the lower AND gate can be enabled or disabled. So, synchronous counter is more advantages compared to asynchronous since uh, the delay is less here and parallelly we can take the output. Major drawback of synchronous is additional circuitry is required, additional logic gates are required here. So, we have discussed in this session. So, why what is the purpose of counter and how they serve in sequential logic design. There are lots of variations in counter design, some I can do increment value, increment or some I can do decrement, up counting, down counting. I can add an enable signal for each count, I can preset and the counter may be explicitly I can set, this is called as presetable counter. So, only if I want counting from 0 to 9, so decade counters, there are variations of counters design that will I will be discussing in next coming session.